The concept for EPAR trade is basically, in my opinion, there's a big hole in the internet. So the internet started many years ago, but there's never been an online business community for racers on the World Wide Web. The need for EPAR trade is actually quite obvious. Basically, people in the business of auto racing need a place online to hang out and get their problems solved. It's extremely simple for a buyer or for a supplier to interact on the platform. The first thing you need to do is sign in, which is free. And the second thing is when you see a product that you're interested in, all you need to do is click on request more information. If it's a company, you click on request more information. And then from there, it is forwarded directly to the buyer or to the supplier. You can go to epartrade.com, you become part of a community of businesses in racing and it makes uh, sourcing products much easier than just on the internet or using Google. At epartrade there is no e-commerce, it's literally a connection just like at a trade show. So now, any time of the year, a buyer could reach out to a supplier through an email. More than that, it's a place to go just to keep current every day. So it's a good place to start your work day in your racing business or in your offices of your professional race team. And you know you're current when it comes to new technology, industry news, technical papers, technical videos, all of that and more. We're not looking for a million hits per day. All we want is people who are really the volume buyers of racing products in the racing industry to be part of the little world of EPAR trade. We have racing businesses participating from around the world. So you get suppliers from around the world, you get buyers from around the world. EPAR trade really eliminates having to travel, closing down your shop. Now you have a place to showcase globally your racing product and technology. Good morning from California and uh, welcome to Race Industry Now, the technical and business webinar series from EPAR trade presented to you by ARP and Performance Plus Global Logistics. I am Francis Savignan, the founder and CEO of ePortray, the global platform for the performance and racing industry. This is episode 222, and we're going to be talking with ATS Racing Fuel, a great uh, company that has actually been a sponsor of uh, our uh, annual event, uh, Race Industry Week. So we're very thankful, and they couldn't participate in last year's uh, um, week but uh, they ask us to save them a spot for this year in the weekly webinar. So we are, are going to be joined by Kai and Ian, who is in, in France. We're going to be ra talking racing fuel. And with me this morning are Judy Kinn, the co-founder of EPAR Trade and a wonderful host, Mr. Brad Gilly. Judy? Well, thank you, Francisc, and welcome everybody. We're really excited because last week marked our four year anniversary where we created this B2B platform new to our industry. And we're so thankful for the industry actually using the platform. Um, it's, it's good to see people connect and hear that they're doing business. So um, we're excited for your anniversary. So on to you, Brad. Ah, very exciting as well, for sure. And uh, I'm just thankful that uh, you guys have allowed myself and Jeff Hammond to be a part of this for as long as we have. It's been a lot of fun and really looking forward to uh, many, many more years to come for sure. So thank you very much, Francis. Thank you very much, Judy. And we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, this sounds like a fun one today as we're talking about racing fuels and our topic today, the global shift away from leaded race fuels. And our panelists are uh, Kyle Moose, the sales and technical manager with ETS Race Fuels and Yan Labia, the Global Product Manager. And uh, we're excited to have both of you here. And uh, as we get Yan on uh, on the screen, we'll uh, uh, go ahead and welcome you first, Kyle. Um, first, tell us a little bit about yourself. I know you've got a pretty extensive racing background in motocross and uh, especially out on the West Coast and everything else you've done. And you just joined ETS not too long ago, in fact, late last year. So tell us a little bit about yourself um, and your background. Yes, sir. Thank you. I appreciate you having us on board here today. Uh, uh, good morning to everybody. Uh, but yeah, a little bit of background with myself. I, I started in the motor uh, motorsport industry just out of high school. Uh, I was about 19 years old when I started. I actually was uh, doing a little bit of uh, work, uh, engine work uh, and chassis building on motocross uh, in the motocross industry and uh, was able to align myself with uh, a couple engine builders and some chassis builders and 
uh, got to learn a little bit of the ins and outs of the combustion engine and, uh, and was able to, to, you know, learn from there. And uh, from that, I uh, got involved a little bit into the engine side with the clutch, the clutch design. Uh, I worked for a manufacturer, a clutch manufacturer, and then uh, I moved to uh, uh, another race fuel company. I, uh, I was actually with VP Racing Fuels at one time. Um, and then, yeah, just recently uh, took the position in, in November and very excited to be on board. And, uh, you know, ETS is, is definitely a forward thinking company and, and they definitely have some great ideas and, and the future is bright. So I'm very excited to, to be on board. Well, we, we know of ETS's success in racing in all forms of motorsports, not just motocross, even though uh, motorcycles are your background, uh, which I'm a big fan of as well. Uh, and we're going to definitely talk about that for those who don't know. Uh, Yan, are you with us now? I know we don't see you on video, but you, you have us on audio? Uh, yes, uh, I'm on video. Uh, no, sorry, I'm on audio. I'm not sure if you can hear me. Okay, I do hear you. I, okay. I don't see you on video. I'm not sure if anybody else does. Too bad. But, uh, I don't know what's okay. happening. So I'm trying to turn on my video, but I said you guys um, doesn't allow me to join, so I'm not sure what's happening. <laughs> we'll, we'll figure that out on our end. Well, tell us okay. a little bit about yourself, Yan. Yeah, thank you very much, first, for an invite. Very happy to be there with you guys today. Um, so my background, um, I'm a chemistry background and uh, specialized in sales as well. I've been working now for 20 years in that company and been in charge of the ETS Racing Fuel brand for 15 years. Uh, so I'm a global uh, that... um, product manager and I'm handling the different um, sales teams we have around the world. So in Europe, in USA and, and in Japan as well. Well, welcome, and uh, and we're happy to have you here for sure. Well, let, let's just talk about um, uh, ETS fuels, and I know ETS has a lot of different fuel products, both leaded and unleaded, and today we're talking about the advantages of unleaded racing fuels. If anybody has a question, I uh, want you to know that you can always type it in the chat at any time during the discussion, and we'll do our best to get the question answered for you, and we look forward to the interaction that you can bring to this uh, panel as well. Um, Kyle, let me start with you and just ask you about the advantages of running ets unleaded racing fuels yeah yes sir no i appreciate that um you know that's it's absolutely you know our topic today is the the, the global shift away from from leaded fuels and ets is uh very forward in, in in regards to the unleaded technology uh you know as we know in europe europe is a little bit more uh progressed when it comes to fuel technology in the regulations uh, one of which is lead, you know, they, the Europe uh, is outlawed lead uh, a number of years ago. So ETS has kind of had their jump start and head start in, in regards to the getting involved in the U.S. market. And, uh, you know, so with that, you know, the, the ETS brand, it's uh, consistency is, is, is always a, a major topic in the discussion. You know, e ETS uses uh, chemical purities that are 98 percent. Uh, which is, uh, you know, builds a, a consistent chemistry. And when you build a, a consistent chemistry, you have a consistent performance as well. Um, that's, a, that's a huge, uh, you, know, uh, you know, kind of a, a jump off point for, for ETS is, you know, the, the protection side of, and the stability side of our unleaded fuels as well. Um, you know, we, the ETS is, is the leader in our pro-grade fuels of being the most stable. Essentially, under heavy race conditions, you'll have issues of boiling. Um, so that's one of the, that's one of the advantages of, uh, of our product, our unleaded product. You have that resistance towards detonation and towards boiling. So uh, stability is absolutely key with, with the ETS brand. Um, the other side of it is, is the environmental health and safety, you know, being that, you know, Europe is so forward thinking and so f advanced in regards to the environmental side of things. Uh, here in the States, we're definitely catching up. Uh, you definitely see that there is a shift that is happening uh, to, to get to the green or unleaded products. Um, so that's, you know, that's one of the things that is nice with ETS is we're kind of, kind of already been in this game and already been doing that. Um, also, too, is it's just the cleanliness, you know, the cleanliness of the fuel. Typically, there's some buildup, um, you know, of, of, you know, valve train, piston and, and exhaust chambers. Uh, that's what's nice about the ETS brand as well, is you have that clean burn. So you're not having this heavy buildup, um, which uh, gives even more uh, performance, you know, advantages. 
Yeah, that's uh, and and all of those sound great. But uh, yeah, and I'll direct this toward you. Obviously, for some people who might need to or might be making a transition from using leaded race fuels to using unleaded race fuels, what are some of the things that they need to know? And uh, you know, maybe even some of the hidden dangers that they might find in working on engines. Um, first of all, what is really important to mention is the dangers of lead. Um, as Kai mentioned, lead is a very carcinogenic chemical, and um, this is really important part. People must use lead watching very much um, the way to handle it. Um, in terms of engine um, management, let's say, um, the lead fuel are very well known and we known to bring um, high octanes. So it supports to avoid engine detonations. Um, this is a very easy component to use and to have to increase uh, the octane and therefore avoid detonation in a fuel. But there's lots of ways um, to avoid to use lead and to avoid detonation. When people are switching from leaded fuel into unleaded fuel, of course, they have to pay attention as the fuel characteristic themselves, you know. So um, is the fuel oxygenated or non-oxygenated and as well as the density of the fuel. Um, what is important is of course to make the correct mapping to adjust the correct air fuel ratio and um, add, uh, change as well the uh, spark advance. People may be feared um, to switch from leaded fuel to unleaded fuel, but there is lots of applications we see people using lead fuel because they are thinking lead is the solution while they will be extremely safe using a lead fuel. And what I mean being safe is being safe for the engine, but mostly being safe for their own health. Because as mentioned one more time, lead is very dangerous. Mm -hmm. You know, um, for people building custom engines, obviously, you know, they're doing an engine build for whatever they're going to use. There are a lot of racing series that, uh, you know, might actually take a, a manufacturer engine, let's say, and decide that that's what they're going to race with and they modify something like that. Also, um, the, the danger inherent to using engines that have oxygen sensors and different things like that in using leaded fuel versus unleaded fuel. Yes, um, lead fuel indeed are, or lead is very um, dangerous component for uh, oxygen sensors indeed, and catalytic um, converters as well. So you have lots of people with uh, street cars, um, which are equipped with uh, such uh, sensors, and they are lead fuel, using lead fuel, and as consequence, um, they are damaging their engines. Mm -hmm. Kyle, let me ask you about this as far as uh, how long ETS has been using and promoting unleaded fuels in racing. Uh, can you give us a little bit of history on that? You know, they, they've actually been promoting probably now for uh, an excess of uh, um, 30 years in Europe, in, on the European side. And here in the States, it's, it's been a shift as they, as ETS came into the market in, in the U.S., that's one of the things that they were learning is, is we, we were very, the U.S. market and the U.S. motorsport market is very still uh, connected to lead fuels, you know, high octane, uh, high lead ox uh, uh, contents. Um, and, and then that is your formulation for, for horsepower. And that's your foundation for horsepower. And um, in theory, absolutely. But that, that is an older technology. The, the new technology has come in and we're actually getting the same results with unleaded product with, with lower octane values um, and, and unleaded with the same type of detonation protection, the anti the anti knock protection um, and lubrication as well. So uh, that that is one of the, the the shifts that we're doing here in the states, and that's actually one of my you know particular job is to is to educate the the the, the U.S. motorsports public and let them know that hey, we don't have to necessarily go to our old or old playbook. To, to build horsepower anymore. We can go ahead and do something just as well with our unleaded product and, and, and attest to what Jan had said. It, it, lead is the most carcinogenic product in race fuel and it's the most leaded in, in essentially um, our, the most amount of lead exposure comes from fuel in, in the States. So um, that's one of the things that we want to 
educate the public, let them understand and know. And, and as we get this youth that's involved in motorsports, and as you are a fan of motorcycles, we have a, a major youth uh, growth in, motor, uh, in motocross. Um, and, you know, you get kids as, as early as three and four years old riding these bikes. So we want to make sure that when the families are getting involved with the sport, even if they're new to the sport, that they understand, they're very educated. They understand that uh, companies like ETS are doing their part to, to build something and, and, and uh, give it to the public that is one, the, 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 the most performing on the planet. That's where ETS is always going to make sure that they hang their hat on is they're going to have the best product. Uh, but also with that too is, is this whole other quality control side and safety. Uh, and so that, that, is, that is something that is kind of unheard of in, in our market. It is, it's always just been, hey, run the best stuff. It's the fastest stuff. And uh, now there's the technology that absolutely it is the best stuff, but then we can lean it towards making it more consumer friendly and, and a little safer towards everyone. Yeah, you know, looking at this from two sides, obviously with the regulations in Europe and where we're going here in the United States, uh, and basically a shift away completely from leaded race fuels, uh, how long, how much longer are we even going to be talking about leaded race fuels? And if you're using that now, how quickly do you need to start really considering, I need to make a shift to unleaded, because if I don't, then I'm I'm not, I'm going to be out of gas. Absolutely. Yeah, no, it, it's now. You know, I, you know that's one thing that we're, we're seeing the shift now in, in, in racing. There's just no doubt. We, we can see over the next five to 10 years that it's gonna become a major topic and major series. Um, and so the, the idea is to be ahead of that curve and, and show that the brand that uh, you know is here, uh, that we're, that's our focus. Our focus is to be uh, kind of the forefront and the head of the curve uh, of, of our product. So right now is, is one thing that I'm doing. You know, I, I actually uh, attend a lot of races. I'm typically at the track at least once a weekend. Um, and that's exactly what I do. I'm here to not only educate people on the ETS brand, but let them know of, of some of the positive uh, sides of ETS, uh, not just in, in, in regards to the performance of the product. Um, the fact that the, the product is uh, an unleaded product and we're leaning that direction. And uh, that's the idea is to get, uh, is to get, you know, get the public involved as soon as possible. So, you know, one thing I think that we all can agree on as motorsport fans is we all want to know that information that nobody else knows. You know, I think that that's always the big thing is knowing the trade secret, knowing something that the factories do that, that we may not know, you know, and, uh, that's exactly what we want to do. We want to have this a, a level of education towards our, our audience and our c customers to give them that pedestal, to have them feel like I am not only an ETS user, but I'm an ETS ambassador. I actually know so much about the product that I'm using that to, to, to educate somebody else. You know, as, as we all know, I, we can only reach so many people, but it's, it's who you know and, and that audience that you, you attract and uh, so that that's essentially what we're trying to do is it's it's here and now it, we are educating people. Which is great. Well, we see you now, Jan, and uh, great to have you here. Um, I'll direct this to you. This came from the chat. Uh, it says TEL was invented in 1923 to eliminate engine knock noise. And all that time, nobody has ever explained from a physics level what TEL did to the fuel. What problem did adding TEL to the fuel correct beyond engine knock? And then um, uh, the question went on to say, are you aware of the dissolved and entrained air contamination problems in refined petroleum fuels? Is that one you can handle, Jan? Uh, yes and no, because uh, let's say uh, I'm not here to make promotion of, uh, of, uh, of lead. Uh, for sure, lead is useful to avoid um, um, detonation until decrease the detonations, um, but that will be let's say very technical to go into details. And on top, you know, this is not uh, the, the the aim of uh, of today's. Um, something I wanted to mention earlier on, if you don't mind, is um, you know, Kai mentioned how long since how long we were promoting uh, unleaded fuel. Uh, unleaded fuel has been banned in Europe 30 years ago. So at the end of the 19th. Um, we started with a four-stroke engine, which were carbureted or um, injection engines. And by the early 2000s, it has been applied to specific se segments, such like the two-stroke uh, motocross or the racing boats. And, you know, at the start, it was kind of 
um, reinventing the wheel, let's say, for the industry, for ATS, we had to develop new ways um, to avoid engine detonation without using TEL, so without using tetraethyl lead. Um, so in a way, you know, it was a bit like no pain, no gain. So you are, we were um, forced no more to use lead, but basically it pushed us in a situation where we had to analyze deeper how was the engine working and to truly understand the reason why um, detonation was happening and especially for the different types of engine, it was two, two stroke, four stroke, carburetted, on injection, etc. And you know, that was hard for us at the beginning, but I think it was very valuable at the end um, because now we much more understand how the engines are working and we understand how with non lead fuel we can prevent detonation and we can even improve the um, engine performances. Yeah, and you might have answered this in part in what you just said, Jan, but it says, could you, uh, consumers be interested to know the facts about unleaded products having a lower octane number assigned to it, but yet yield better front end knock, which affects the events in the combustion chamber as much as the final octane number. Could you expand on that? Absolutely. Um, octane is just a parameter which is measured, you know, and it's measured according to certain um, settings, which are not always relevant of the, uh, how the, the engine is working on the track. Um, so octane is just a value. And what you have to do is to avoid the conditions to, 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 to let the detonation happen. So by cooling the engine, for example, the higher temperature is the engine, the higher risk it has to, met, to meet detonations. So if you apply a simple rule, which is I will develop a fuel to avoid the engine to be too warm, just by decreasing the engine temperature, you will decrease the likeliness of getting detonation. This is one ax work, axis on which we work for fuel development. Um, another one will be the um, flame speeds. Um, detonation is when you have a double flame into the cylinder. And if you are using fuels which are um, burning very fast, you avoid that double flame to happen. So you avoid the detonation. Even if your fuel show a low octane value, we avoid detonation. That's fascinating I, and, and very informative, which is really great. We appreciate that. Uh, as far as um, working in the auto racing industry, uh, uh, either Kyle or Jan, whichever wants to answer, how long has ECS been working in auto racing? Uh, I'll go for it because uh, I'm more older, let's say, than Kyle <laughs> with an ETS. Um, we started, uh, ETS started in the, in the late 80s. Uh, we started our uh, fuel development with the 24 hours of Le Mans with a partnership of Peugeot for their uh, 905, 905 program. So at the time, ETS meant ESO Technologies and Services. So we were a subsidiary of ESO which is the brand of ExxonMobil. And at the time, uh, ESO is um, well famous, let's say, in at least in Europe, um, uh, fuel brand was partnering with Peugeot. So by end of the 80s, um, we started development for the Peugeot. And uh, two year, few, few years after, uh, the Peugeot won the 24 hours of Le Mans two years in a row. Um, I think that was in 92 and 93. At the end of... Um, Nine, on the 19th, we became independent and we developed the racing uh, business fuel activities across different market segments. Circuit racing, of course, coming from the first four hours of Lemo, but also we uh, developed quite well um, with regards to rally application because here in Europe, rally is very a big uh, segment. Uh, so we were developing specific fuels for uh, companies like uh, Peugeot, Toyota, Subaru, Mitsubishi, etc. Uh, we won several uh, World Rally Championship titles at the time where um, the fuel was free for choice. And later on, we developed with a motocross. So we entered the motocross market with a Suzuki and uh, Suzuki GRP, GRP and Erin, Eric and Sylvain Gebors. And uh, later on, they introduced us to uh, Suzuki USA, um, to Roger DeCoster, who you may know. And um, the test that uh, we started, let's say, to sell ETS fuel in USA for the uh, motocross segment. 
who I am Denji, he was testing our fuel, uh, helping us uh, developing uh, the, the, the formulation to fit uh, the US market. And um, with regards to um, working in the auto industry, you now well, if we go on the bike, we are very closely working with the KTM group, for example. But if we go deeper in the auto, um, we very closely work with uh, different companies like uh, Hyundai, Skoda, Ford, um, the Stellantis group, uh, which is Peugeot Citroën, for example, um, as well with the for circuit applications. We deeply work with uh, Toyota, Nissan, and uh, on that. Okay. okay, and Kyle here in the United States, actually, um, I, just looking at the history on the website, ETS actually had its uh, U.S. subsidiary open in 2007 in Charlotte. Can you speak to that in the United States component? Uh, in regards, you know, I can I could speak to you know the the part of when I, when I came on board. I I our our office, our corporate office, is out of uh, Troy, Michigan. Uh, so um, when in 2007, when the when they made it to the states uh i do know that they were it was a small team uh and, and from from there i i do understand that uh there's been um you know some some ad additions in regards to what we do in america in regards to our reference fuels for for manufacturers um and some of our uh some of our toll blending fuels as well um so i i do uh, i i I'm, I'm a little bit versed on that side but essentially yeah for me yeah it all came in and when i was at the troy office uh in 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 uh november and essentially that's that's where i start all right uh, and tell us about the partnership with lucas oil yeah that's that's very exciting we're, we're really excited this year to to announce that we're the official fuel partner for uh lucas oil pro motocross series um, which is amazing because this year it's in, it's in its 50th anniversary. So it's an anniversary year. It's a milestone year for, for the, the series. Uh, we had an, a tremendous opportunity to get involved with the series. Um, we, we, we worked really well with, uh, with the MX Sports side, which is the sanctioning body, uh, to, to get this deal solidified. And we're beyond excited. Uh, the, the brand, in, and now we're this weekend will be our fourth round of the motocross series uh, this season. Um, but uh, just this last weekend, I was in Colorado uh, attending the Colorado event, um, which is notorious for one of the, the most extreme conditions for fuels. So that was one of the things that was nice is for us to show up on site to be there and to prove that our fuel uh, doesn't have stability issues. And, and one of the common things in a high altitude and high temperature setting is uh, boiling. Fuel will boil, it's, it's almost inevitable. Um, and majority of all pro grade race fuels uh, have a boiling issue. Luckily in our case with, uh, uh, we have a pro grade blend, it's called US MX 21 K2. Uh, that product in particular has no issues of boiling. Uh, and we've been able to actually leverage that and, and get some more teams involved this year. As we're growing this brand and people are discovering that ETS, there's another uh, race fuel company that, that's out there um, that, uh, that actually has top pro-grade fuels uh, that has given us a tremendous opportunity. So really, this is just a jump off point with the Lucas Oil Group. Um, there's been, you know, some some talks and discussions of, of some future uh, partnerships, which we're, we're beyond excited to be uh, a part of. I think uh, it's, it's, it's big for the brand to be uh, aligned with such a prestigious uh, series like the Pro Motocross Series. Um, and again, you know, that for us in motorcycles, as you know, that's our grassroots. You know, it all started with motocross um, 50 years ago. So the fact that we can just get involved uh, and, and be a player and, and, and be a partner with these guys, it's, it's, it's a tremendous uh, feather in our cap. You know, we're, we're really excited to, to see what the future holds for us. Yeah, which is wonderful. Uh, Jan, let's go back and, and direct this question towards you. And as far as ETS fuels being ahead of the market curve right now in producing unleaded fuels and uh, and really producing unleaded race fuels that are making a difference out there on the racetrack, could you tell us about that and being ahead of the curve? Absolutely. Um, as mentioned, uh, we started uh, developing unleaded solutions 30 years ago. So this gives us a kind of advantage um, I think over our certain of our competitors. 
And um, I want to demonstrate, let's say, that um, switching from leaded fuel to unleaded fuel is definitely not uh, something uh, impossible. Um, three years ago now in Australia, the, um, the local uh, sanctioned body um, banned the use of leaded fuel for any types of um, racing applications and uh, including the drug racing. Uh, as you can imagine, we are fully aware that drag racing um, engines are using uh, very high compression ratios and most of them are using leaded fuel. So uh, into this industry, that was quite a nightmare for them. And for us and for our local uh, partner, IMS, um, that was a great opportunity because the um, mechanics, the uh, drivers has no other chance than to try and let it kill. And you can imagine there was kind of lots of reluctance, but at the end, uh, the people are extremely happy and, uh, and they are better performing nowadays with unleaded fuel compared to leaded fuel. And funny fact is that they call one of our fuel, um, they call it the answer. So the, that fuel is called, uh, uh, our brand name for that fuel is XPD105, but they called it the answer. And I love that nickname really. And it's truly represented, represented the fact that the answer, unleaded fuel, which has only an AKI, so an octane value, according to the US type of 98. So you can imagine a 98 AKI octane um, for the more European people, let's say it's a RON 105 MON 91. Um, that fuel is powering engines with compression ratio up to 16.0. Um, 16 so it's quite amazing, you know, and uh, we have several users. Um, one of our customers uh, is called Rob Dicker from Munich Racing. Um, he just made his best time ever. Uh, it's a record on the dragway street uh, for, for Pro Stroke. A few weeks ago, we released uh, uh, a video on our YouTube channel. We have other customers as well uh, with a 16, um, 16 to 1 compression ratio, which are extremely well performing with this XPD 105. We have other fuel which are available in Australia and in USA, uh, like our Expo Drag Free, which is as well very high performing and very, very well responding to um, nitrous oxide uh, injections. So it may be a fear for people to go from lead fuel to lead fuel, um, but you know, 80% of the time when we talk to uh, customers, they do not require high octane. And they just say, yeah, I'll go with the highest octane because octane is performance, which is absolutely true. People have been taught that octane was performance. This is not true. And um, most of the time they are a little bit fear, let's say, to go with MLD fuel. But when they test it and they truly see the performance they can gain and they are extremely safe, they are very happy. And of course, this is very beneficial for the environment and for their own health. Mm -hmm. uh, a quick question here, uh, and, and Jan, I think this will probably be more directed towards you. It says, can you talk about consistency and how much it matters in racing fuels? And I'll even add to that as a second part, as far as storing fuel as well. I know some people worry about, yeah, if I'm going to store this fuel over the winter time or whatever, how much that's going to have an impact and where ETS is really a great solution there is also. Thank you for that introduction. Yeah, consistency is uh, something which is a very uh, a synonym of ETS racing fuels. Um, let's say 95% of the fuel we supply are made with pure molecules. So we are using molecules with purity higher than 98%. And it means that batch after batch, years after years, you always have the same chemistry. And of course, therefore the same physical, um, physical parameters for the fuel. So, a customer which has very fine tuning um, will use ETS fuel and will not have to remap. We will not have to be pending the consistency of the fuel because the fuel is always the same quality. And this is a huge, um, um, huge benefit for our customers. With regards to um, the lifetime of storage of the fuel, um, because we are using pure molecules, they are not containing impurities and um, they are not forming gums neither. So we have had some experience of our most extreme fuel, you know, has been stored for five years in very warm country and very humid country. 
And uh, we took a, a sample, um, a customer of us found a, um, a, a drum remaining. So we took a sample, we analyzed the sample and the gums was extremely low while it was a very, um, let's say aggressive fuel on our, from our point of view. So um, yeah, our fuels are very well, um, very well for long, long time storage. All right, uh, Kyle, I want to uh, direct this towards you. Um, question from the chat. Any tips on how to choose the best fuels for your needs? And I know ETS uh, has applications for uh, motorcycle, for automotive, for marine as well. What would you tell customers? Yes, sir. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, well, typically what we'll do is we go through kind of a technical questionnaire and we'll break these guys down and see exactly what they're playing with, you know, what their applications are. Uh, and then how are they using the equipment? You know, are we are we just recreational types of guys or, or are we are we real types of racers? You know, are we you know, it, it, it depends, you know, and, and especially, you know, in, in regards to like a hot button like motocross, for example, you know, uh, each rider is a little bit different. Each rider is a little bit more unique. Some guys are a little harder on bikes because they're harder on the clutch. They're, they're a little bit more of a, of a type of guy that likes to rev the engine out because that's where the power is. And so it, it all kind of depends. But what we typically do is we just gather some information. Uh, we, 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 that, I think that that's what's so nice about ETS is, is uh, we invite the partnership. You know, that's one of the things that we treat almost every customer just as a partner. What, are, what is your application? Let's let's break everything down. Let's see exactly what you're working with. And then from there, we can make suggestions uh, on just fuel. But also, most of the time, we make suggestions on kind of what you just touched on is what is the is the consistency of the fuel and the storage and and how are you guys treating the product and when it goes in the bike or, or in the vehicle is it setting for a long time you know things of that nature of educating the customer as well on just overall race fuel what how to handle race fuel most guys you know assume it's just kind of like a pump gas you you just you take it out of the pump you pour it in and you go out and and, and you go race which is in theory absolutely correct and that's what What's nice about ETS is majority of all of our uh, fuels are a pour-in solution. Uh, essentially, it could roll and, and it could go into anything. Now, as you fine-tune it, and that's typically when we go through the technical questionnaireing side, uh, is we can fine-tune any application. But essentially, you know, with ETS is we we have product that's is a direct pour-in. Uh, and then typically what we have is we have like a, a good, better, best option for these guys as well. So not just not just a one type of one stock shop. Um, there are customers that just want to be told the one. But then there are other customers that do want to understand the options of what they have. Uh, so so absolutely. Yeah, it's it's about uh, getting involved, you know, uh, on, a, on a level that these guys can open up, ex explain what their applications are and then we help them out. Jan, I see you had uh, posted in the chat a link to the ETS website with the technical questionnaire. And there are a lot of questions in there that um, really seem pretty important and maybe some that people might not necessarily think of. Um, tell us a little bit about the questionnaire. And also, um, when it comes to, let's just say, as we're talking about shifting from leaded to unleaded fuels, Jan, if I am using a leaded product right now, um, what are some things I need to know? Or is there some products that you have on there that maybe I can start looking into and say, Say, okay, I'm going to go to this maybe to make my shift to unleaded. Yes, um, the, the shift from leaded to unleaded is not an easy one, let's say, and this is where well, this is the reason why we created this technical questionnaire is to fully understand the capability of the customer. The first question is, what is the fuel you are using? Basically, we need to understand what is the reference. Secondly, is what are you looking after? Uh, are you looking for a lower price, uh, um, higher performance? Uh, in terms of performance, can it be? Um, faster acceleration, higher engine um, RPM, let's say. And uh, finally, uh, what is extremely important as well is to understand if the customer is able to map the engine or not. So if you want something quite equivalent that will lead us to a, uh, a certain solution of our, of our fuel portfolio, if he's able to um, to map the engine or not map the engine will definitely um, make a different choice for, for from our size. But indeed, it's quite complex for some of the customers to reply all the 
information to inform all the informations. But uh, what um, what is important basically is to give as much information as possible. So it is really much more supportful for us to understand these needs and therefore to um, recommend the best route. You know, if I'm looking, uh, you know, at the ETS racing fuels, a lot of people sometimes have a tendency to say, okay, what is the most premium top of the line product? And I want that. But as we know, in racing, there are various levels of racing. There is the weekend warrior, someone who might have an engine in their race vehicle that is going to last them five or 10 years, they hope, because they're not necessarily out there, you know, doing what the pros do, who, you know, people who do this for a living and are literally changing out engines, maybe multiple times in a weekend or at least week in and week out is there anything to know, you know, at different levels of racing, if I'm just the weekend warrior, do I really need the premium top of the line product or can I actually do better for myself and my budget and saying, okay, what else does ETS have to offer that's going to make more sense for what I do? Kai, do you want to answer this Yeah, one? absolutely. Yeah, I can <laughs> chime in on this one for sure. Uh, yeah, and the, you just hit the nail on the head. So, you know, typically what we do is, is, is yeah, we, we gauge, we try to figure out these guys and, and understand their application. You know, most of the time with these guys that, you know, they have lots of practice going into a race, you know, just like any competitive racer. You know, they're going to have their training time, their practice time, um, e either in the vehicle or on the chassis. Um, and so that's that's essentially what we have is we, we have options for practice and then race day. Um, that's something that typical racers, we're all on a budget. You know, everybody, every every racers on a budget unless they're getting paid to do this stuff. And, uh, you know, and the idea with this is is how do you still use a, a consistent great formulation but not necessarily have to pay for it during the practice time of the week or the practice time of your schedule um so you know typically that's what we do as well we have other options for hey this is your practice day fuel and this is your race day fuel um so again gauging who we're working with there are some guys that absolutely cannot run another fuel this way the bike is mapped or the the ecu is mapped or even worse, uh, it, they're just so hard on equipment that other fuels just wouldn't even work for their application. So um, the, again, it's just about us gauging who they are and how they ride, um, establishing the relationship with either their engine builder, uh, their mechanic, somebody that understands the ins and outs of how their uh, athlete is, is either driving the equipment or riding the equipment in this case, um, that, uh, we, we, we define kind of those lines. And then at that point, again, kind of goes back to what Jan was saying in, in regards to the questionnaire is just breaking these guys down, creating this level of partnership that it's not just send you to a website, give you a list of a bunch of fuels, and then you have to make the choice yourself. Um, I think that that is the normal thing in, in U.S. Uh, motorsports, especially with race fuel, is that monopoly that was created is you have a, you have a hundred choices. Uh, but but again, with with a guy that's just trying to get navigated or a racer is trying to get navigated to just understanding the right application. Uh, that's why we, we go ahead and, and we don't want this to be a, a shot in the dark. We want to make sure that the one choice that you make or the couple choices that you make is the right application, because, again, it goes back to that ambassadorship. We want these consumers and these customers to talk about how great the ETS product is, because I think that that's, that's the thing that we hang our hat on, is we have an amazing product. Um, we're still growing as a brand here in the States. Um, and, uh, in, you know, obviously with companies like yourself helping us out to, to grow that brand, but really what we try to define ourselves as is the best race fuel on the product on the planet for any application that you have. Uh, I, I will say, and I know Jan had just posted even another uh, technical questionnaire for the weekend warrior types that might not be as elaborate as the first one. And that's down in the chat if you want to check that out, which I would encourage you to do so uh, because it is pretty comprehensive. But, you know, you keep putting out a good product and you keep having uh, success with it week in and week out. Definitely uh, the product is going to grow. Jan, I, I do want to ask you this uh, one other question as we're talking about moving to unleaded fuels. And for people who, you know, a lot of times we just we, we root our feet in the ground pretty hard and we're going to be a little stubborn and we're going to say this is what I've always done and this is what I always want to do what do you say to that person 
in uh, making the switch over to unleaded race fuel, why, hey, this might not only be just fine for you, this might actually be an upgrade to what you've been doing. There's no doubt about that. You know, um, when I see at the competitors um, lead fuels, they are, let's say, quite simple um, um, chemistry and um, all are relying, let's say, on the octane boost uh, bring by, by lead. So um, we do not have always direct comparison uh, for the fuel and we encourage the uh, customers to spend a little bit of time and uh, on the engine mapping, and we um, recommend guide. We have guidelines uh, to push the um, the mapper uh, to increase uh, this performance. But there is no doubt, knowing our technology, that switching from a standard leaded fuel, let's say, to an unleaded fuel, they will definitely gain some performance. Which is a big thing for everybody. I know we're a little bit limited on time here, Kyle, uh, but I do want to ask you again, obviously, the relationship with Lucas Oil and motocross is a really great thing. And uh, and for other people wanting to, especially the, our viewers here in the United States who are interested in learning more about ETS race fuels or if they have any questions, where do you direct them? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. The, it, again, you know, kind of just touching on the, the Lucas Oil side. Yeah. The the. the our factory level teams that we work with at this point are, are most one of the most winning uh, programs that, that, that is in pro motocross right now. So the, the fact that we have this involvement with like the, what Jan had mentioned before, the KTM group, uh, which is super important uh, to us, that relationship is important. They essentially put ETS on the map in, a, in the States uh, and, and gave, uh, the, attained their first championship uh, with uh, the KTM in the States here. So um, it's super important for us on that pro grade level to be able to, to go in and speak to other race teams, you know, and, and, and have them have the option. I think that everybody's always looking for an edge. Everybody's always looking for that next thing. And it kind of goes back to what you said in regards to the, the racer loyalty. The racer DNA is so deep rooted. And if it's not broke, don't fix it. And I absolutely understand being a racer myself, we, we are, we don't, we have such a checklist of things that we don't want to go off that checklist. But what we do is if we get the opportunity and essentially what it is, is being present. You know, that's the biggest thing for us is being there, being present, being at the track, being on site, being able to talk to these people and also, you know, educate them, let them know and, and test our product. And usually uh, I always say the proof is in the pudding. And that, and that is a, 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 a true statement to our product. I always say, I know guys, it doesn't seem like it. You've run leaded, you've run this high octane. It, it has to hit this threshold. I, I promise if you just test this, try this, let's do this. And every time we get the, the jaws on the floor, we can't believe it and we're switching. So uh, it, it, is, it is nice, but, but it, again, it, it, it does take that leap of faith um, so, so from that, that's where we come in and that's where, uh, being on site, being present, being a partner in this, not just being a sales to this customer and not just selling them product. We want them to be able to buy it once and then never switch over again, uh, create that loyalty in the brand and, and, and move our, our brand forward. Right. Well, if I may no question, yeah, go ahead. Uh, there's, there's an interesting question from William Vatorella. Um, in the chat, he is asking how, um, with the evolution and um, of FIA standard towards sustainability, how does it play with our plan? And thank you for asking that, um, because you know, sustainability. The first step will be to uh, phase out lead. The second step is to use a renewable, sustainable components. And this is something we're extremely uh, um, advanced. Let's say, is as you can see below me, there is this uh, poster, renewable lace. This is our range uh, for renewable racing fuels. And uh, we pushed a few weeks ago a press release. Um, we signed a partnership with Super GT Championship in Japan. Um, so it's quite equivalent, let's say, of the EMSA in Japan. And they will run from 2023 full year one of our fully sustainable fuel. So we are providing fully sustainable fuel to them. And um, let's say the advantage of that fuel is that it's, it is a drop-in solution. 
So it's not a fuel made with 85% of ethanol and 15% of bioadrocarbon. Um, this is equivalent to E10, so 10 equivalent to 10% of ethanol. And for the uh, Nissan, Honda, and Toyota that I was talking earlier on, we have a um, technical partnership with them. It's really a, an easy solution because they are shifting from a pump fuel, fossil-based pump fuel, to a fully sustainable racing fuels without any major uh, change in terms of um, equipment, fuel lines, etc., uh, as well as with the mapping. And you know that fuel contributes our fuel, our renewable is GTA R100. It does contribute significantly um, with the reduction of greenhouse gases because it's using um, um, it's using uh, materials which are waste uh, materials. And um, those uh, wastes are um, liniocellulosic uh, wastes. And those wastes are, or the plants are absorbing the CO2. So we are no more releasing uh, carbon from the foci, but we are just recycling the carbon um, from the atmosphere back into the, into the, into the cars. Wow. And I, and the press release I did see on the website, and I think that's really neat what you guys are doing. And and I would encourage people to go check it out. But Jan and, and Kyle, thank you so much. Uh, you know, I mean, it's very apparent that the uh, the technology that's moving forward is with unleaded race fuels. And, uh, and that's probably the train that people want to jump on because it is the fast moving one. And we're really happy you came on here to talk with us about it. And I would encourage people to find out more from you guys as well. And they can even find a link through the EPAR trade website to ETS racing fuels. Thank you so much thank you very much for hosting us uh, you're very thank welcome you. thank you thank you and then we pushed actually ets products back on the home page of the portrait platform again thank you for being with us today this episode has been recorded along with all the 120 something uh, plus previous ones. It will be available later today on the ePortrait platform as well as on our YouTube channel, social media, and via our newsletters. We will be back next Wednesday. We will be talking racetrack safety with electro uh, barriers which uh, we're going to cover everything from karting to Formula One. And uh, so thank you very much for being with us today. Let's go racing and uh, we'll see you next week. Bye. Thank you, bye. Registering on EPAR Trade is easy. Fill out your name, email, phone number, and create a secure password. Next, select your business type. Choose supplier if you're looking to display products or services and connect with buyers. Choose racing business if you're looking to find new parts and connect with suppliers. Choose race team if you own or are a member of a professional racing team. Begin typing your company name. We most likely already have your company in our database, which you can select from the drop-down. Then, enter your job title. Choose Claim Company if you'll be editing your company profile. Other members of your company can choose Join Company if they'd like to use ePartrade as well. You can view and agree to our terms of use here. If you'd like to receive our weekly newsletter, choose Accept. Click Register Now and your registration will be submitted for approval. You'll need to confirm your email once it goes through. To keep our platform industry only, you'll be approved shortly after. If we require additional proof of business, we'll reach out. Welcome to ePartrade.